everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Young and restless, infamous Victor Newman is up to his old tricks, and it's not looking good for a couple of people. In fact, we go so far as to say it's looking downright horrifying for one of his nemesis. The fact that Victor didn't kill Jordan or turn her in and put an end to her torment of his family when he had the chance told us one thing. He wasn't done with her yet. Adding to the intrigue, Victor has told everyone else that she died and Cole is the only one, so far, who senses that there's more to the story. He's being cagey, if you will. We're here all week and next week, too. As we ponder what in the world would have possessed him to lock up the madwoman in his own basement, rather than hand her over to the authorities or have his henchmen end her life, he continues to slowly break her down. Jordan appeared to be going through some kind of withdrawal in the cell, panicking over imaginary spiders, before finally seeking solace in the bottle of vodka Victor so kindly provided. Jordan, however, is still sharp enough to deduce that there's a reason he's bothering to go through all of this. So she began bargaining, demanding that Victor tell her what she could do to earn her release to a regular prison, which she's begun to take a more desirable view of as compared to the claustrophic isolation of the cage in the cellar. It has to be said, he may also be feeding her rats. If so, prison mystery meat would be a step up. Anyway, Victor basically implied that there was something he had in mind for her, but he wasn't about to give her any hints until he was good and ready. In the meantime, Victor's feud with Jack Abbott left the frenemy zone in a big way when the latter was found to have spent the night with Nikki in a suite at the Geno City Athletic Club. Not only was Jack drinking with her when he was supposed to be acting as her sponsor, an arraignment Vic had very reluctantly accepted, but he called up his dealer and mixed pills and booze to the point that Nikki had to call in the paramedics. A bad scene all the way around, but it only got worse. After Nikki packed her bags and went off to rehab, Jack was painted as the town hero for shocking her out of drinking herself to death by throwing himself off the wagon. Jack making sacrifices for Nikki was never going to go over well with the mustache. And add to that the humiliation of his wife, having spent the night with another man in a hotel, and well, Jack's in big trouble, mister. With the Black Knights so angry at his rival that he told him he'd have let him die, revenge on Jack is definitely in the cards. Well-versed in her father's tactics, Victoria explained to Cole and the audience that her dad's insistence that Claire stay away from the Abbots was a red flag. He's planning something and doesn't want his granddaughter to get caught in the crossfire. All of this leaves us knowing that a Victor has something in mind for Jordan and B, is formulating a revenge plot against Jack. If you didn't get a chill when you did that math, you had better go back and do it again. Yep, May Sweeps is about to get ugly as Victor uses Jordan to take his vengeance on Jack. While the horrifying scheme hasn't come into sharp focus yet, we'd be willing to be that it will involve Victor using Jordan to get Jack hooked back on pills. With Diane already having one foot out the door, infighting at Jibboat, and Ashley's altars running amok, Victor's nefarious plot against his nemesis could not only demolish the abbot's life, it could end it. Very dangerous stuff at play here, folks. Jordan is a wild card here, however, and loathes Victor, so the odds of this going sideways are above average. We all know what that means, collateral damage. Victor is known for having tunnel vision when he's out to get someone, with not enough thought given to the possible implications for innocent bystanders. If you don't believe us, ask Summer, who nearly paid with her life when her grandfather brought Patty back to town to terrorize Ol' Smillin' in the past. 